Welcome to the final video in this short series on film scoring. In this video, we will be taking a look at how you can set up Cubase to score a scene. We'll learn how to load the video, how to properly sync the scene to the appropriate SMPTE code, how to mark the contour changes, and finally, how you can tempo map the scene to make sure that your hit points occur at the start of a measure. Before we get started, I want to thank my incredible patrons who make videos like this one possible. A special shout out goes to my newest patron, Daniel. I'm grateful to have you on the team and I'm looking forward to getting to know you in the coming weeks. If you'd like to show your support for this channel by becoming a patron, signing up for private lessons, purchasing a copy of my book on film scoring, or even by making a one-time donation, the links can be found in the description of this video. So with that, let's get started. All right, so here we've got a brand new, fresh, blank project file in Cubase. And when we're setting up to score a scene, the first thing we need to do is to import the video itself. So we'll go to File, Import, Video File, and we'll just click on the video. All right, so right away you're going to notice some red letters here, right? What this says is Project Video Frame Rate Mismatch. It looks like the project is reading 25 frames per second while the video has 24 frames per second. All right, so this is basically saying that right now Cubase is set up to read 25 FPS, but the video only has 24. Now, this might seem like a small difference, but it'll still cause a lot of issues with synchronizing and collaborating with other people on the same project. So we want to make sure that we fix this. It's pretty easy. You just go to the project drop-down menu come down to project setup. And what we're going to do is come to frame rate right here. We're just going to click this little button here, get from video. And there we go. All right. So the next thing we need to do now that the frame rates are each uh, matched up is we need to find out what time code this video starts on. And this is pretty simple. We'll just skip all the way to the beginning. We will hit F8 on Windows. Uh, and we will find the frame rate right here in the video. So it, here it says 0595400. So what we're going to do here is we are going to go back to our project setup. And for the start, we are going to do 0, 5, 9, 5, 4, 0, 0. We're going to hit OK. And right now it's going to ask us, we have modified the time code. Do we want to keep the project content and its time code positions? Basically, this is saying the time code up here is about to change. Do we want to keep this video right here relative to what the time code says now? Or do we want to update the time code without worrying about synchronizing everything? Right now, I'm going to say no, we do not want to synchronize. All right. Now, we will change that in just a second because now we've started at the beginning. But now we need to get our project started for the start of the actual video itself. Now, Danny in the Wild Bunch starts the short film at the 1000 marker. So this time we're going to go back to the project setup. We are going to go to 01000. We're going to hit OK. And this time, yes, we do want it to sync. Because right now we've got this little pre-video, this countdown in synced to the exact time code that it starts on. We want to keep it synced like this. So we will hit yes, do synchronize and bam, it's going to cut out some of that for us. And it is going to start exactly if we hit F8 again at the start of the movie. All right. So now we need to do it one last time. So that was for the video. That was for the movie. Let's get to our scene. Now, let me pull this out over here. These are the notes I took during this video series. These are my spotting notes for this entire project. I'll have these available to download in the description of this video. If you want a template for just what I look for to take notes, and basically notes from all the videos that we've been having in this series, I'll have that available on Patreon. But here, let's look at our scene list. Right now, we want scene four. And it says in our master scene list that we found out that scene four starts at 01023716. So let's get that started. We will go to 01, we will go to 02, then we will go to 3716. All right, once again, yes, we do want to keep everything synced as it currently is. And what we will find now is if we watch the video again by pressing F8, it starts exactly 
where the scene starts. All right, and this is perfect. All right, so from here, we can start actually working on the scene itself. And the first thing we're going to need to do for this is we're going to need to add the sum contour. We're going to need to mark where the contour changes are. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to here. We're going to click Add Track. And we're going to add a marker track. All right, what we're going to do, I like to put it above the scene, is we're just going to put one marker at the very start of the scene. We will just label this Scene Starts. Right. The next one we need to make is we need to find where the first shift in contour takes place. So we'll go to time code. Let's pull up our video to help a little bit. Now, if we look back at our notes that we took earlier, we found that when we took some tentative notes for the scene itself, we said the first contour takes place around 01030622. So let's see if we can find that. All right, we were at 0240 here. We were at 03. All right, 07. So we're close. 0305. 6. 10. 16. 23. And 22. There we go. So this is where our first shift in contour is. So we're just going to add a marker right there, and we're going to make a small little note. Contour 1. All right, then we're going to do the very same thing for our next contour shift, which we said was around 01033410. So let's find that. Once again, we will pull up our frame, our video, because I just find it easier to look at this empty code than the ones up here. We're going to zoom out again. We are looking for 0334. We can use these numbers up here for a rough guide. 32, 33, 34. We are looking for 3410. There we go. We're getting there. And 10. There we go. So we are going to mark this as our second contour change. Two. So now if we pan out a little bit, we'll see that we have now split our scene into three points. Actually, since we've still got a bit more of the video left, let's take care of that too. So we've got our notes, and again, this is why the master scene list is supremely helpful. We have scene four, we have start and end, so we are looking for 01035120. See, this is why it really pays off to do all this work ahead of time. We're going to find out exactly where this scene ends. We said 5, 1, 2, 0. Oh, that was really close. 2, 2, 2, 1, 2, 0. We will say scene ends, and we will just do a marker. We could cut this like that and then just delete it, but I don't like doing that just because I like to see how the music ends and fades into the next, especially since during the spotting we decided that I did not want to put music in the next scene. I wanted it to stand for itself. So I'm going to let that sit so we can see how it blends. I'm going to say scene ends. And now we've got each of the major contour shifts included. And I'm going to just name this track as contour. All right, so something else that's very important that we need to notice real quick is I have not locked in this video footage or the markers yet. And this is very important. This could cause a lot of grief. So what we're going to do here is first we're going to switch both of these from musical measurements of time to linear. And we simply click on this button here and switch it to a clock from a beat. So what this tells us is it tells Cubase which way we want to track these markers and this information. If we have it on linear, then it says, all right, contour shift one, 030622. That is where it is locked in, all right? If I change the tempo, let's say we go from 120 to 70, we can still find that contour shift. It will still be right there, 030622. All right, that's what we want. It's the same with the sound, the audio here. We want to be tagged to um, the window, the linear frame of time. If it was not locked in place, if it was locked to music, 
what it would be doing is it would be looking at the bars and beats. It would say, all right, contour, it is at just like at whatever point this is, measure nine, beat three, slightly off. It would match it to this, and anytime we switch the tempo, it would move these to make sure that it remains attached to this specific spot of measure nine. We do not want that, especially not for this stuff. So make sure it's at linear mode and make sure you lock it. That's very important. So the next thing that we'll want to do, especially for scenes with lots of dialogue, is we want to create another marker track and we want to go through, we'll say this dialogue. We want to go through and find out where does the dialogue take place, especially if it's a bit longer. Something like this, where Miranda says, Danny. Danny? We, we could mark that if we want you can. It's up to you. Um, what we're going to want, something longer like this, though. Danny? Where she starts to explain herself. This is going to be very important. So time code. We're just going to stick this right here. I'm going to say in. All right. So the dialogue is started. All right. It's in. All right. We're going to switch this to linear as well. And then we can just keep going until. Let's see here. If we were to keep watching. I know you're upset. But I didn't have a choice. Oh, we always have a choice. You can be as specific or general. And you reap what you sow. All right, so right there, he said, reap what you sow. We'll just mark it here, and we'll say it is out. All right, so the dialogue is out. All right, and we could go through. We could mark each individual moment where the dialogue comes in, comes out, because the idea being that, remember from the previous videos, dialogue is king. And anytime there is dialogue, the music needs to be especially careful to make sure it's not overpowering it. Now, our very last step will be to actually start tempo mapping everything. So this is, in particular, you want to make sure everything we've done so far, it's linear mode, it's locked in, nothing's going to be changed once we start messing around with the tempo. All right, so we're going to switch to bars and beats mode. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look... Contour one. Now, if you have a sketch of your theme figured out already, this would be a great moment to bring it in. Now, I had intended to write sketches of both themes, but I have been very busy and I've put off this video for too long and I didn't get around to it. So I'm sorry. But I do know that when I was taking notes on what I wanted to write, I knew Miranda's theme was going to be around 70 beats per minute, which is why I put 70 in down here. Now, if we'll look at 70 beats per minute, we have around the contour shift, it's around the nine measure marker. That's really nice because most themes are typically going to be eight or four measures long. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure our cursor is at the nine, uh, nine measure marker. We're going to go up here. We're going to click on this button, the time warp button. This is a tool in Cubase. You'll notice that you're clicking it because now the measure and bar time code thing up here is turned red. What we can do now here is we can pick any moment and we can start to drag it. I'm going to take that ninth measure. I'm going to bring it to the contour. All right. So right now it's not really snapping. So it's going to be a little difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here. This is telling the cursor how to snap things, snap type. I'm going to go to snap events. All right. This is what the markers are very useful for is as I drag, it'll snap right there. Now I have to push really hard to get past or to go forward but it likes to snap right to that event. And what we have now is I will stop here. I will go back to the selection tool. We now have, let me get rid of that, eight measures, which was how long I had anticipated Miranda's theme to be. And look at that. It is 65 at 65.641 BPM, which is perfectly fine in film scoring because lots of, if you're going to record it, if you're going to record it in the studio, chances are they're going to have a metronome in their ear called a click that they can listen to and we now have a nice tempo we know that the theme is going to be eight measures long probably not going to use the full theme because of the dialogue but we've got four measures just before the dialogue that we can bring in there aren't too many crazy tempo changes and it's right around what we were looking for now after this just so we can have a bit of a crazy change which actually look at this we don't we wouldn't have to this tempo change could be from 9 to 16 
which would give us another eight measures, pretty much. If we really wanted to, we could just click here. We could get it close to the where we want it to be. We could grab that, and we could clean it up just a little bit. No, not there. We could clean it up by going to Contour Shift 2, and we would have, from the original Contour Shift, it increases a bit. We're now closer to 70. Over here, it's closer to 65. I'm going to bring up a tempo track just so you can see these changes. So prior to Contour 1, we have it 65. Here, it's 69. Um, then here, right from Contour 2 to Scene 4. And I'll keep it around here. I don't want anything too dramatic. I could, if I wanted to, I could say, let's say I want 16 measures between Contour 1 and Contour 2. I could just start out by, let's delete that, getting roughly, let's say we'll just roughly double it. We'll say 100. 20. So then we'd say what that'd be like 24 measure 24 would need to be there for contour shift 2. So we'll zoom in a little bit get to measure 24. We'll click on it. We'll bring measure 24 to the second contour shift and look at that Cubase has already mapped our tempo changes here in the first eight measures. It's 65 over here in contour shift 2. It's 130. So it's a bit faster than double. Uh, well, yeah, it's about double actually um, to get 16 measures in and then if we wanted another tempo change we could just simply let's say get another eight measures we could click here drag measure 32 so it ends right at the end of the scene so here we would have three distinct tempo changes we'd have 65 130 and then 124 now this is quite extreme and i would not recommend it especially if you plan on working with live musicians so Instead, let's go back to what we were doing originally. We'll delete this. We'll cut this back down closer to 65. And instead of trying to cram eight, there are 16 measures between these contour shifts. Let's just go back to getting eight. And then here we'll go for another eight. We'll go for 24. We'll end with the scene. So we'll have a little bit of a crazier shift here towards the end. All right, so it starts with 65, goes to 69, and then 96. So this right here would be a significant jump. You could try and play around with it. Really, the concept here is to figure out a logical number of measures you'd like and find out how many to fit in between each shift in contour. You can play around with it until you find a tempo map that works well for you. But once you have it, it's a simple matter of starting to score. And this is where your sketches would come in handy. If you've got a sketch for each of the primary themes that you've planned out, again, if you've taken all these notes, you should have a music summary, which we'll find that. And it says in Introducing the Wild Bunch, yes, this is it. All right, so for our music summary, we wanted to use both Danny and Miranda's themes. All right, so if I had been able to be prepared ahead of time and have my sketches set out, I would find a, I would just put in Miranda's theme here. Then I wanted Danny's theme to be prominent at the end, so I put that here. And then I'd find a way to bridge the two through a development style type section, similar to like a sonata form. We've talked about that in previous videos. But we'd get that figured out, and it'd be a matter of just sketching and working with what we've got. But yes, this is how you would prepare a Cubase file to score a scene. And with that, we have reached the end of another video. If you found it helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel and share it with anyone you think may enjoy it. I want to thank my patrons once more for their incredible support of this channel, as well as each of you who show your support through your kind messages, emails, and comments. I appreciate each and every one of you more than you know. In the meantime, keep studying, keep working hard, and keep writing new music.